eight years ago, you know, we were sort of a colleague in chemistry department. And he came to me and he said, uh, uh, I, I have been old Nobel Prize winner. They get to nominate. They get nominated, that's one thing. I've been nominating another person for 10 years. It did, hasn't worked <coughs> uh, out. <laughs> so now I will, I'm thinking of nominating you and Akira Suzuki, another, uh, another winner uh, who is in Hokkaido, Japan, who was ahead of me. He was, he's maybe several years senior to me. And he was uh, with Professor Brown. Uh, and he left before I joined him, so I never over that. But uh, since then, of course, we have, uh, we have had uh, many, many close contacts. Uh, <clears throat> so that became a, a bit of reality. Of course, uh, being nominated <laughs> doesn't mean <laughs> there's no guarantee. Maybe one in thousand. You know, one in thousand. And then with time, well, actually, uh, yesterday I remember I was telling my wife, well, let's go to bed, and uh, whatever happens will happen. <laughs> whatever won't happen won't happen. <laughs> and then uh, let's think that my chance may be one in hundred. Probably not larger than hundred, but uh, I would say one in hundred. So it's crazy to look for, <laughs> look for it. But I also told her, if it if it happened, if it ever happened, <laughs> of course I <I'll> take it. <laughs> but not as a major surprise. Not as a major surprise. It was not a major surprise to me. Clearly. But still, I can I can tell. For this particular award, I can name 10 very worthy other people. And, uh, well, I must feel sorry for them because they, they are worthy. They are worthy. But so harsh reality is that uh, only a uh, lucky mm, small portion of the <laughs> worthy people end up receiving. And uh, the difference. So huge. That's the part that I am. I have begun agonizing over. But uh, here I am, and uh, I appreciate your interest. And uh, may I present? <laughs> did I present? <laughs> could I? Could I ask you, please, just to talk a little bit about the significance of your research for ah, these yeah, people? Yeah, what? Yeah, what? Yeah, what it means? Yeah, the kind yeah, of chemistry yeah. you do? Okay. Can you swap out mics, too? Can you use head mics? Sorry. That one seems to be malfunctioning. This is not? Yeah. It's, it's not. Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah, Sorry. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No problem. No problem. <laughs> there you go. Uh, okay. Yeah. Why so, don't you sit down? Mm -hmm. Use the mic there. Mm -hmm. You know, just avoid this one. So. All right. Okay. <laughs> Organic chemistry is uh, one of the most practical areas of chemistry, as opposed, for instance, as compared with the physical chemistry uh, or some other things. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> one of the main, main areas in organic chemistry is the synthesis. So, for instance, if you compare organic chemistry with inorganic chemistry, in inorganic chemistry, synthesis part is important, but nowhere near as important as in organic chemistry. Yeah, I hope I'm not alienating any inorganic chemists, but I can say that because I am, I am spanning both. Areas. And so organic synthesis will continue to be important as long as we need organic compounds and without organic compounds, none of us can, can live. <laughs> Food items, drug items, and uh, you know, all bio, biological items are organic. Okay, so, and its significance, I am saying at this moment, will only increase with time. We need to do, do more, more. And so, put it simply, one of our major 
dream goals is to be able to synthesize any organic compounds in high yield, high efficiency, efficiently, and selectively. Y E S. Yes. I should sound like Obama. <laughs> And then furthermore, of course, we need to worry about the economy, economically synthesized. And then we need to work, stay away from, uh, we need to be concerned about the safety, toxicity issues and so on. So I was talking about uh, in my lecture today, uh, <clears throat> this right hand working as a wonderful drug, and its mirror image, left hand, acts as a deadly toxic compound. So these are the scientific, <coughs> fine, finer scientific aspects that affect our life, they, you know, uh, tremendous. So I am in this organic synthesis area. And then at the University of Pennsylvania, I was a sort of <laughs> head heavy. <laughs> in the, uh, but hand, uh, hand, well, hand, hand use, that's what you said. <laughs> uh, clumsy. <laughs> and I wonder why organic synthesis is so difficult, first of all. Secondly, so circuitous, roundabout. And I thought of kids' Lego game, which I'm using. Lego game. And uh, if you have all kinds of Lego game pieces, you, all you need to do is just, just a snap according to your design. You know? There's nothing. <laughs> nothing to it. And fundamentally, if you can form some key bond, most, one of the most important is a carbon carbon bond because carbon, presence of carbon defines organic, organic compound, organic chemistry. Carbon carbon bond, but beyond that, of course, carbon nitrogen, carbon, oxygen, or carbon, hydrogen bonds. But my, I have constant focused my attention on the carbon, carbon bond formation. In, in the manner of Lego game, playing Lego game, that is a pretty accurate description of what we have been trying to do. And uh, to do this, I noticed early on we need to <coughs> revamp organic chemistry. And then we need to bring in, bring in many more elements that are available in the periodic table, which I don't see here. But <laughs> organic compounds consist of about 10 elements. Carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, and the several halogen atoms, and maybe a few others. About 10. 10 out of about 100 plus elements that are available to us all, in chemists or non-chemists alike. So we, and the traditionally chemists try to tinker toy these organic compounds to make organic compounds. So they, they were focusing, organic chemists were focusing their attention on the mainly 10 plus few to several other metal, non-organic kind of metal. Uh, element. They are metal, typically metal. Alkali metal, magnesium, uh, some of those. That was their mindset. And uh, when we came, not, not just myself alone, but a uh, uh, dozen, a few dozens of us, young new guys, uh, we realized that uh, we should make use of the entire periodic table. Entire periodic table. And of course, I came to Professor Brown because he was specializing in boron chemistry. Boron is not present in our body. Boron is not an organic element. It may be present as an impurity, but, uh, but uh, he revamped, he modernized, he uh, you know, improved organic synthesis tremendously, with the introduction of his element, the boron. But that's one of 80 or uh, 85 others, you know, other metals available. 
and uh, myself and some others actively pursued this using metals as reagent which will not be will not appear in the final product but appear in the intermediary stage and the catalyst preferably catalyst so that defines my area and uh, if you know over the past uh, 10 years during the last last decade <coughs> this area has produced three groups of three, so nine, nine Nobel Prize winners. First in 2001, <coughs> Professor Sharpless at the Scripps Institute, and uh, Professor Noyori in Japan, Nagoya, and then another person at Monsanto. These three won in this general area which I define transition metal catalyzed organic synthetic reaction. And the second time in 2006, Professor uh, Grubbs of Caltech and Professor Dick Schrock of MIT and then the French chemist uh, Professor Chauvin, these three were recognized. In the same in the same general area, based on the same general concept. So, be, so this is, as you can imagine, is a, is a huge subfield of organic or chemistry. And uh, I have gathered, <laughs> and probably this reason, uh, reasonably true, that our area was also recognized relatively early on, maybe 10, 5, 10, or, or more uh, earlier. But I can tell our area had uh, probably uh, 10 or more worthy candidates. <laughs> they must have had the hardest time <laughs> trimming down, to, you know, reducing down to three. I can, I can tell. And, and uh, I was agonizing this morning because uh, one of my dear friends, uh, who actually uh, is a professor in Stockholm, he himself is a quasi candidate. He's a very nice person and he's a fine, fine chemist. And he needed to send me a congratulatory message, and, uh, which I appreciate very much. But uh, I felt a little sorry, very much, very sorry, that he was not included. So <laughs> that's the only flip side of this, <laughs> this event. But. Uh, Mine, my, my, so uh, I want you to remember.